Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we're going to continue our video series on how to write a good research paper by covering the following topic, how to write a good method section. Let's go! In the previous video, we discussed about the introduction and we said that it represents 30% of the work. Today, we will focus on the three main language areas of the methodology section, especially passives and tense pairs, the use of articles, adverbs and adverbs location. Starting with the first point, it's important to correctly employ the present simple and the past simple passives. The first one is generally used to describe a standard process of mechanism while the past simple is adopted to describe what you did yourself. Let's make it clear with this example. A. The solution A is mixed with the solution B. B. The solution A was mixed with the solution B. You can see that in A, I'm describing a standard practice while in B, I'm telling the reader what I did myself. Keep in mind that passives used in formal writing are agentless. So the only way the reader can dissociate a general procedure from your own work is through the use of the correct tense. Let's move on to the next point. But before, I have a question for you. Do you know the actor? I'm pretty sure your first reaction will be what actor? Now let's try with this one. Do you know an actor? Of course, now your answer will be yes, I do. So this is how it works. You should ordinarily use the when you and the reader know you're talk what you're talking about. Otherwise, you should use an or a. Trust me, this simple rule is the source of many mistakes in research writing. Pay attention to that. Let's continue with the use of adverbs. This is a really critical language area because the poor use of adverbs can lead to disastrous errors. These errors are worrying because the sentence could not mean what the author intended to share. Let's illustrate this with an example. The study investigated the patients living in country X with cancer B last year. In the sentence, due to the position of the adverb, it is difficult to tell whether the experiment focused on the patients living in country X last year or the investigation was conducted last year. So the adverb location is critical in this case. Apart from these key language areas, a successful methodology must integrate the following components. To illustrate how these components work, we're extracted this methodology from this paper. In the first component, you should give a general introduction and overview of the materials and methods. This is what was done here in green. Then you should restate the purpose of the work. This is what was done here in yellow. Afterwards, you should give the source of materials. Then you should supply the essential background information this is what the author proposed here in blue. The second component include providing specific and precise details about materials and methods, justifying the choices made, as well as indicating that appropriate care was taken. The third component is about relating materials and methods to other studies. Ultimately, you should indicate where problems occur during the experiment. Additionally, this is what you should do and should not do when writing about methodology. It is recommended to use transition that signals the change from one idea to the next. It is also good practice to use common thread which ties all the body paragraphs together. On the other hand, I'd not recommend you to be too general in the methodology section. Instead, provide arguments and explanatory details along with relevant reference. This will give more credit to your work. After finishing writing this section, you can tell yourself, 
you've achieved 52% of the work and move to the next part, which is the results section. We'll cover this topic in the next video. That's all for today. Hope you learned something from this video. Please check out our next video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.